Before we begin, I would just like to announce that I am giving away 350 platinum to one lucky winner. This is open for all platforms and everyone can join, including the mobile version of Warframe. Oh yes, I almost forgot, no mobiles yet as it got delayed. For those of you who are playing on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or even Nintendo Switch, then you get a chance to win the 350 platinum. For those asking for the mobile version, then ask first about crossplay. Jokes aside, the link to the giveaway is on the video description, and good luck to all of you. This video is all about the focus school in Warframe, I will be imparting my knowledge to you lads on every focus school active and passive abilities. Take note that we will take into account progression here. In short, I will share to you how I progressed through each focus school. What I unlocked first, and up to the last. Honestly, there's no bad focus right now and they offer some fun if you used them in missions wherein they will shine. It's just, other focus schools should be unlocked first for smoother progression in the game, which is especially helpful with those new players in the game. So without further ado, let's begin with the first focus that you should unlock first, and that is the Zenuric Focus School. This school is considered the energy school and for those beginners, that don't have arcane energize and don't want to spend too many resources on energy pizza, then I suggest getting this school first. In the focus skill tree, you must focus on maxing three aspects. One is the based passive of Zenuric which is called energy pulse that grants 50% additional energy over 5 seconds when you pick an energy orb. What it does is after you pick up an energy orb, you will gain an energy region which lasts for about 5 seconds at max rank. Next, you must get Zenuric's Energizing Dashur, you can just leave the Energy Pulse passive at rank 1, then max Zenuric's Energizing Dash first. This will be your main source of energy region throughout your entire playthrough of progressing up until Steel Path levels. You can also use this after the progression, especially if you don't have a max arcane Energize yet. What Energizing Dash do is after a Void Dash. It will create a small bubble that will last for 6 seconds, and everyone, including your allies will get an energy region buff of 5 energy per seconds once they will pass through that bubble. The bubble lasts for about 25 seconds, and once you perform a void dash again, it will create a new energy bubble. The previous energy bubble will be gone, and for those asking for stacking energy buff, then don't hope for it. But you can infinitely cast Void Dash if you have the Operator Energy to maintain the energy region for you and your allies. The next thing you want to do depends on what do you want to do next in your progression. If you want to finish up the Star Chart first, which is a very good idea, to be honest, then I suggest going with Temporal Blast. A max rank Temporal Blast will slow down enemies for a couple of seconds, allowing you to easily hit them in place. The reason why I suggest this is for easy star chart boss fights. The 80% slow for 15 seconds allows you to finish bosses easily in normal star chart levels. The slow does affect most of the bosses in star charts, but you can expect it won't be that great in terms of idle and hunting as bosses like this won't be affected by this Zenuric ability. Now, once you have maxed these three Zenuric abilities out, it's time for the Waybound abilities and make sure that you max out both Void Flow and Void Siphon, as these passive will be crucial for idle and hunting. Void Flow allows you to gain more energy for your operator so you can use up more Void damage, while Void Siphon increases the energy regeneration of your operator so once you have depleted it out, it will only take a couple of seconds to recharge, especially if you have an amp that has fast recharge time. During the Zenuric focus leveling phase, you are most probably at normal star chart levels, and the best way to focus farm at this point is in a max range Sarin with a spore build. You need to get a Zenuric lens installed in your Sarin, and farm that elite sanctuary onslaught to focus points. After you have maxed out all the Zenuric abilities I have mentioned earlier, it's time to proceed to unlock the next focus school, and this time, we will try to focus on doing a better focus farm which is the Tridolan Capture. The thing about idle and hunting is it lets you earn brilliant idle and shards. This is a resource needed to unbind waybound focus nodes. They can also be converted into 25,000 focus for any unlocked focus school, and every successful dridle and runs yield a couple of brilliant idle and shards which you can convert to focus points and max out all the abilities of each focus schools you have already unlocked. I must emphasize that the focus gain from brilliant idle and shards only works when you have unlocked a specific school. If you want to unlock a school then you must accumulate focus points through farming it with Sarin in the Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. 
A quick tip to progress easier is that, every day, you do the Elite Sanctuary Onslaught with Sarin to get the max focus standings per day you can earn. Then, unlock all the focus school and just focus on idle and hunting to max all abilities inside all the focus schools. For those new players who have friends that can to triddle and hunting effortlessly, then all they do is just focus on the Madirai focus first and improve their idle and hunting skill. What they usually do is just go through all the star chart level until they unlock Cetus and the planes of Eidolon. After that, they stop the to focus on Eidolon hunting and they can max all their focus schools in just a week if they are dedicated and willing to do the effort. But of course, there are lots of things that you need before you can be a good teammate in Eidolon hunting. If you don't have the resources, or the credit card to swipe that real cash for platinum, then I advise the slow progression part which is rewarding and to avoid easy burnout. After Zenuric, I would say that the best school to unlock is the Madirai Focus. There's only one ability that you need to focus here first, and that is Void Strike. This ability allows you to gain additional damage void damage once you leave Void Cloak or that ability of you operator that he or she goes invisible. The additional damage can be increased indefinitely as long as you don't deactivate void mode by having energy. That is why sometimes, you see people, going void mode and dropping energy pizza in triddle and hunting to increase the void strike charges. Aside from void strike, you would also want the way bound abilities of the Majurai focus which are the inner gaze for the amp and void beam energy increase, and the eternal gaze for the energy regeneration for amps and as well as void beams. After maximizing the three abilities, you then proceed to the next focus school, which is the Naraman focus. The first ability you should max out is the Affinity Spike as it helps you level up your Warframe when using a melee. It grants 45% affinity in every kill, and it may not be as good as the meta leveling method right now, but when you are just starting Warframe, you will need an affinity bonus like this to level up fast and progress as fast as possible. Next, go with the Waybound passive of Naraman to support your operator in idle and hunting. Naraman focus gives mobility to your operator, allowing you to use Void Dash with 120% speed with Mind Sprint, and then, Mind Step that increases your operator's overall speed by 30%. After that, skip first all the other Naraman focus and go to the Unara focus school. The most important skills in this focus, if you are a new player, are both Basilisk Gaze and Basilisk Scales. In fact, if you are not going to use any melee builds in your progression, then you might want to skip Naraman and go with Unaru first. Focus on the Waybound first, since it will give your operator armor, and then Basilisk Gaze is very important in terms of proccing the Unaru Wisp, as it increases the radius of your Void Blast. For solo idle and hunting, if you want to do it as early as possible, then you can go get Unaru Wisp as it's best paired with the Clamorer, Cetus, and Proper Prism which is a high fire rate amps that allows you to melt the shields of Eidolon in just a couple of seconds. Honestly, I did unlock Unruh first to do solo Eidolon hunting since in the past, I was having trouble with connection problems and I can't do a team run. It wasn't the fastest, and as you can see some of my focus abilities are not max yet. The only ones you see are at max are those I considered to be beneficial for me right now and for my combos. So. It's also a good option to skip Naraman and go with Unru if you will go solo idle and hunting. But remember, you must also have Trinity and a Voirig Cornboss to somehow make the most of the solo idle and hunting run. If you don't have such requirements, then I advise you to stick with a team. The last focus school I have unlocked is the Vazarin Focus, and the first few abilities I have maxed out are the Operator skills which increases the life of the Operator, and gives health regen. After that, Maxing all the abilities I needed for progression, I then picked a focus school to maximize all abilities, and continue until I have what I wanted. The very first focus that was able to almost max all abilities is the Zenuric focus. But remember, this is just my personal choices and you can maximize other focus if you wanted to. I will just give you some ideas what are the other abilities can do for your Warframes and Operator. Inner Might has very good usage when it comes to heavy attack melee builds especially those that requires building combo counter to the max before doing a heavy attack. Instead of consuming the whole combo count after a heavy attack, it will just drain a couple of combo count. It's very effective to use also with melee efficiency mods like focus energy to further increase lower the combo consumption of doing a heavy attack. While the damage of void static is good, but the energy it consumes is bad, and you will leave void mode so easily if you further max this one out. 
Also, the damage is not that high when you are at high level. I suggest that you should proceed to Void Singularity as it's one of the best abilities to group enemies. It's mostly used in a group to nuke setup if you don't have the Magus Anomaly Arcane for the operator. Long story short, it's a good alternative if you want to group enemies together but if you can somehow purchase a Magus Anomaly, then might as well skip this as to keep Void Singularity up. You will need drop energy pizza all the time. And most of the group in combo, such as going operator mode and then aqua blades doesn't work right now. However, it's great with the broken warframe and the grasp of lock as it combos really well together. The same with lightning dash and voltaic blast. They are just fancy abilities that create an electric effect in my opinion and don't do that much damage in a real mission. Moving on, we got the other abilities from the Naraman focus. Aside from the affinity spike passive and the waybound abilities, Naraman has one of the most helpful abilities in terms of star chart missions going to steal path levels. This is especially better when you are a melee oriented person. First of all, power spike has a very massive use in the game for maintaining combo count. This when paired with the dexterity arcanes on your weapon will allow you to remove any combo count in your melee, allowing you to mean max your melee build with damage or any mods that you deem useful for your playstyle. Moving on, we got Executing Dash which pairs well with a finisher build, especially those made from the Helm Infability named Marked for Death. The thing is, you can use Executing Dash to open enemies to finisher kills. The feature of this ability to disable any Ragdoll effect from Void Dashing through enemies makes it a great tool for a grouping setup, while Surging Dash is not necessary, it does add a bit of damage but only applicable in a short area. The Void Blast effect when you use Naraman Focus will debuff confusion and disarm to enemies. It's like when you hit an enemy with Void Blast, you will trigger the target to attack his or her allies, and also disarm those who got hit in the process. While it's helpful but not really necessary especially if you have the damage output to kill multiple enemies in one swing. In terms of Void Stalker and Void Hunter, I would say that I find a good use with Void Stalker compared to Void Hunter as it increases T he melee critical chance for a couple of seconds. Just a quick tip, try this with a Nyx Mind Control setup with the Archetider on, and you will see the damage bonus ramp up to insanity for the Mind Control target. But the problem is, it takes a lot of time to incorporate this ability to your melee Nyx setup, not just on Nyx with Archetitron, but also with another melee setup. The worst part is, the buff is not constant as the stack decreases after you leave Void mode. As for Void Hunter, well, seeing through walls is not even a fun gimmick especially if you can wipe out a room in a matter of seconds. If it has some wall hack feature, wherein bullets and other projectiles can go through walls for a couple of seconds, then it might be a fancy gimmick. Next, we have the Unary Focus. Aside from the Unaru Wisp, the Void Shadow is the best to max after you have the necessary stuff on this focus school. The invisibility allows you to cloak moving objectives, and even clones, such as Wukong's Celestial Twin, Equinox Duality Clone, and others. It can also cloak allies within the range for the cost of energy per second. The only problem is, it can only be active when you are in void mode so you will probably drop some energy pizzas if you wish your allies to be invisible. The magnetic blast serves like Sata's Whisper and Mag's Bubble, but a shorter range version and clunkier than the Warframe abilities so it better step away from this. Sundering Dash and also Cripping Dash will somehow be good in low levels, but after the normal star chart, or even after acquiring some powerful weapons and abilities, you won't need this at all. And lastly, Stone Skin is a bit of armor buff. It could be good for mean maxing armor like in Chroma's survivability but the armor you get won't matter in my opinion. It could be better with the operator though as more armor means you can stay active in the field and break the Eidolon shields. Good for solo Eidolon hunting but not really necessary as we would need offensive stats than to just relying on survivability. Going to void mode alone allows the operator to survive hits from the Eidolons. In terms of the Madurai focus, its other abilities are more towards increasing elemental damage, having a radial blind ability but a weaker version of course, doing some is a fire walker, and other fire shenanigans that you don't need at all. If I were you, I won't invest in anything else on this focus tree except for the most important ones. The last one is the Vazarin focus, and in my opinion, aside from the waybound passive, you should try maxing protective dash as it helps you sometimes in a real mission. The ability does work in your own Warframes, idol and Lures, and Allies. It does grants you short invulnerability which makes the heal super reliable. 
The other abilities are for support, but right now, I don't find any use for it in real missions. But what if we get a new game mode from the Angels of Zariman update which allows us to use only our operator. When that happen, then we could see the different focus schools being utilized. Probably, Vazarin will be a big deal for support, Zenuric for energy regen, Madurai for offense, Unru for debuff, and Naraman for utility. It would be cool to see an operator only mode, and this could mean we can make more use of the focus tree. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts about it. Thank you so much for watching. Squad leader signing off.